So here we go, folks. And basically our study of the space and the actual factual will keep going on. Not active or activated. Nice. Quintessential. And I'll say it wrong. And I don't care. But we'll keep studying the sun in space objects. Because we have our comet from basically both A and B. Now, I don't have an exact number in the... The title of this one is still out, but there is a good possibility, since we can see it from, let me get over and see, and you can, you got, if you can read the, the tight, uh, now I've got it on A and I got it on B, and I just have to find it, but let's go ahead and see, I want to take you to, uh, let me get the other side first, and basically as you can see that this is fresh footage, and we basically are getting the comet above and this are vast distances, and basically my presumption that it's bigger than Mercury is damn sure. But the most interesting thing that you have to look at here is you see how Mercury in a 24, it should be a 24-hour clock. Mm, interesting. We get f footage back. They're only giving us eight hours of footage. You see that? Now, this is still the only the footage from the 11th, so it's interesting what they have not let us see yet. Okay. Maybe Jupiter doing something again. I mean, uh, Venus doing something again. Apologize about that. Uh, Venus possibly doing something again. And that should be from B behind, because I'm going to show you the comet also from seeing it from the A side, from Ace. And we'll go to Ace. Hang on. And basically, but let's look at this here real fast, because we can see that we'll pump up inside. We'll pump up to 400 first, and we'll scoot up. And you can see that in Mercury does a rotation that atmosphere does anyway and we get a nice clock of showing us that it's within eight hours that it does that okay so interesting so we find out whether NASA knew that before or not which I'm pretty sure they do they've studied and that should be damn well mercury and if not it's whatever rotates that much in eight hours but it should nail it down that being mercury and now that we are basically in here on our comet with the new fresh footage from the 11th now, this 11 footage might be in the future, and you know Sechi's got more than likely. The satellites don't get messed up. Look, at, you've seen all the action that happened. So, they'll have the complete, and then we'll just pump up the, our custom to 999 and get a real good look at this thing. And they'll have, in the future, a, sh a full movie of it, because they'll have all the pictures. And they're still studying it themselves, but basically this is the comet that we think might be this one, and it doesn't matter. This one is an actual factual comet that I'm going to show you on the JPL diagram. And I'll move a little bit to the right, and then we'll move down on Mercury. And no matter what, we're going to find out what rotates that much in eight hours, because that's our comet. And let's show you how the tail looks and everything, and we'll go to the action on as you can see, that should be Mercury, and that does it every eight hours because basically they just did an eight-hour shot on this on this footage. Okay, so let's get over to B, and then we'll give you an idea of what we think this object is. And who knows who they're trying to play with and trying to get people to figure stuff out? Because here we are, and that's it. Same object being shot over from Ace. Okay, on the other side, and this is basically. I guess I could go ahead and show you a map. So from the A headshot. We're going to end up knowing this compressed in the future whether that was it or not and whether that might be ice on or whatever it might be. So there's our map. And as you see from Ace, is shooting it. And basically, uh, do we have more than one? Because we are looking from, hang on. So we know that it's closer on B. And since we're shooting from so far away from A, that this thing is possibly got some kind of a head that could be close to the size of Mercury because that's the head of it way the heck out there. Okay? Because it's closer on B. Let me give you the actual factual on that. Can we get back to... Let me get down and get you B real fast. So B gets us a closer shot and it looks bigger on B. And as you can see, uh, they're zooming in pretty good too because you can see how big Mercury looks in, at B that they zoomed in pretty good on the camera on B, okay? So Mercury's looking real bright, and as you can see, the sun is reacting with this comet coming around. 
uh, to get this kind of action from B on this side of the sun, it does it when stuff is nearby on that side. Usually the sun is basically, everybody that's been watching the sun for a long time has realized that when the sun gets a lot of action going, CME action and so forth and doing that, that basically there's something in the neighborhood and basically you got this comet. Okay, now what we pretty much figured this comet is, we took a good look at this one here. We'll get back over here, I think it sets you over here. And you can see, you can see the tail more at this side, at this angle of it. So you can see the head good in close, it's closer up over on B because that's why everything will look closer in big when it's closer, okay? And it's basically the same thing. And then the, we have seen this already make when it was doing its trajectory or so, and when it comes down to it, you basically get into this 2012 V4 because it ends up with a, it may have made Saturn and Venus, and I hope you, you can tell the separation there, that there's Mercury and Venus there in that shot, that Venus and Saturn did some electrical static reaction to each other there, okay? So if you can realize how huge this thing is, it's, it's, it's almost, you know, one and three quarters the distance of the sun away from Earth right now, so you can see that it's, you know, and it's got a great distance from the sun too. So it's going to do an orbit that's already in here, that JPL's already got designated, that it's going to go way the heck outside the orbit of Earth here. So in the future you can check on the data and I'll take a look at the close approach and stuff on that or if anything, however close it'll ever get to Earth as it goes by here. So anyhow, this is the best thing for looking at the angle. So it's basically inside it has, like I was saying, it's a closer to the rail, it's a closer horse pony to the rail of coming in on the sun than Mercury and Venus. So that makes us know that the idea that what we're seeing and where it's at right now, today, December 13th, that it should be possibly what we're seeing on the footage because it's the 13th and our footage is old, it's on the 11th and we'll keep getting the footage from, and that's why I'm trying to show you this as fast as I can, so, but what we are seeing when we're at uh, the objects here, that basically we're going to be keeping an eye on that right there, because we know it's this comet now, if we deduct it down to that now, that we know that it is a comet, and it did what it did with Venus, and doing what it had doing with possibly Saturn. It comes back to the factual that I was talking about when I showed you Saturn uh, earlier on this, when I moved around to get Saturn, and there you can see Saturn with Venus, the alignment. So that basically electrical static charge possibly did go across to Saturn, and that is massive distances, okay? So it's coming true pretty much that we think, I mean, it's it weighs pretty heavy that, that this is what that comet is, and it's got a wild tail, and let's get, take a look at it here on A, because we you're never going to see a tail like that. Well, we hope we never see a tail like that of anything from the when we're standing on Earth, but now the Elenin, I mean, uh, this Ison is supposed to be hella bright. Everybody's talking about how huge and bright it is, and basically that object that we keep seeing there that I just pointed back to you on the, and just to make it so, get it in your brain that there's something right there, and it's not this, okay? And this is great footage. I got it at 200, and this is what we're looking at. This is the fresh footage, and you don't see, and it'll be f future to see if uh, if we'll get uh, Venus to do that CME flare, that uh, coronal mass ejection reaction of their atmosphere to this or anything else. And we've seen it being basically they do it, the planets do it when the sun does its CME action, but it also ties in that the, this comet could be doing it too. And then I was wondering when I looked at it before, I was like, could that be a comet up there? Is it the same thing? And it ended up being it. And I kept bit my tongue on, I wanted to say it, but now I know it for sure that it is because that's what I was wondering. And then you could see, so now we have history when you went back and seen it, how it went down the magnetical line when it went past, uh, when it went past Venus. And we hope and we pray, and I know that NASA would never pull that on us. They got lasers, so we, they always know exactly that that's Mercury, okay? So that when this comet was moving along before, we know that it's seen it do it to Venus, okay? So it's all angles, so now this thing is moving along where it should be, and 
Uh, let's pop in and take a little bit better look from at it with a little bit higher magnification here. We'll pop in, in and give it the big whammy. Let's go up and take a look at that big bugger. And we're at the shot, probably down, and, and that we're still there. Move it over anyway because we got to get to it anyhow up on the corner. So there we are, and here we go up. And there is, should be, there, it'll be there, and there's our comment. And as you see, they blacked out Venus. So Venus might be doing something again. You see they did the big blackout on us, see? You see the pixels? So, more than likely, it's be interesting to see. Come on, NASA, we can handle it. We know Venus does that reaction. We've already figured it out, okay? So now they blacked out, and they could, maybe they just did it so that we could just see the comet, okay? But Venus is there. Okay, so it'd be interesting to see it's CME in a little bit less then because it didn't do as big as a flash as it's done in the past. But then again, maybe it is because check it out. I'll go, I'll go right a little bit. And you know the comets there, and you can see the pix pixeling out that they're doing. Okay, they're blocking. Let's see how much they keep blocking. How much they keep blocking. And holy crimes, they can't. They don't figure we can't handle it. So they separated out at least so we could just see the comet. We appreciate that. But they black out pretty damn good of the big CME re reactive flare of Venus. And they blacked out Venus. It's Venus is doing it. And we know that the comet's up there and that's not Venus doing that. That's the comet. So you get a real good view of it. Okay. From over on this side and then this is what it looks like when you're over at B. And we just left Ace. And I've already blown in on that. And you got the clock and the ticker, and you only see eight hours. And we get to see that basically that we know that that's Mercury, and it does that in eight hours. Because you've seen how close it is to Venus right now, and they're blocking it out. So thanks, NASA. But at least we get to see the comet alone, and we realize it and figure it out. It would be nice if you made an announcement and put this stuff up, but I guess it's a little bit too deep for scientists. But you want to scare little kids. So I guess there's adults... There's adult uh, astronomy porn, I guess, is basically what we have. Which I guess we'll have to start... I don't know. I kind of agree a little bit, but at the same time, the kids just not... As soon as we know what something is, we should be showing them. I wouldn't have any trouble. I'd be showing my kids. I have no problem. I have the ability to do that, too. So, I guess I will be. So, anyhow, they'll always have the category of watching all of this anyway, because it's a nice... forum to have your studies. So basically it really weighs down that more than likely this is C2012 E4. Okay, and if we come up with something different we still keep that window of opportunity open that the idea that we haven't sent a thousand percent, a hundred percent that we know actual factual, but it's weighing very heavily that that's C2012 V4. C2012 V4 as the elements of it going over top of Venus and Mercury, pretty much actual factual. And the atmosphere of Venus is very large, as you can see. Okay? So, if not, then we have another object that's up there with C2012 V4. Okay? So now this will be moving and should go in towards, since we're seeing it from which camera, we'll see it coming towards. And so no matter what, since it's so high on both B here and large, that means it's close to B. That means it'll be closer on uh, here, over here on A, Ace. So in the future, it'll be interesting to see it go away because we should still see it on, at least we're hoping, we should see it a long time on A here when it comes back around. So, because it's going to go around the sun, they always do go around the sun. So, it'll be interesting how long and how, what kind of angles, and they'll turn and look at it also, because you think they'd want to watch it, see what kind of actions it does. Because we're seeing it great already, and this is fresh footage from the 11th. Okay. So, it'd be interesting if we get it in our eyes, in our vision again, off of the satellites, and they can go 360. We've already seen that with the magneticals and stuff like that. So, it'll be nice if they come out and announce that they've caught this or if it's a different object. So, otherwise, it's got to be pretty close to it because of the idea that it being close to the rail, like I said, closer in, 
But then again, it starts to be a little bit weightful that the idea that, you see, this is on the outside of Mercury, and outside Venus, this is blacked out here, so 